namo dasa bhagavato arahato sama sambuddhasa namo dasa bhagavato arahato sama sambuddhasa namo dasa bhagavato arahato sama sambuddhasa Okay. Yeah, welcome back to Rupa Nikaya study. And the purpose is to apply in our daily life after understanding about the teaching. <clears throat> and then uh, the, the Nikaya, start, Nikaya teaching is directly taught by the Buddha and his disciple during the time of the Buddha. And in Tirawara tradition, yeah, we believe that these teachings are uh, come through the uh, first Buddhist council. So, this believe this come this are uh, uh, original teaching <coughs> of the Buddha and the yeah, Buddha Buddha and his disciple. So, here in this Sutta Diganikaya, in the best six Sutta. The Dikanika number this sutta, which is called Mahali Sutta. <clears throat> the Dikanika Mahali Sutta. Then talking about the heavenly sight and sound. So here in this in, in this sutta is uh, two two aspects. There's one part we already finished. That is uh, Heavenly sight and he heavenly sound. You know, talking about heavenly sight and heavenly sound. So that uh, <clears throat> was uh, the story is uh, Otada. Uh, later we approach uh, with the other Brahmin and uh, approach to the uh, Buddha and ask some question about the the Sunakata, so his friend Sunakata. So Sunakata, uh, you know, just repeat it a little bit. <clears throat> follow, order and follow to the Buddha for three years. And during the three years practice, he attained <clears throat> the sorry, uh, the power of divine eyes, which can see the sight or any perceived form near or far. Uh, so he could see the heavenly sun, but he could not attain the divine ear power so that he can see, he could hear the sound. Then after he disrobed and uh, he he talked to his his friends, the Otata or the Mahali Lichowi, Mahali princes, and talk then talking about the his his uh, his story, uh, the the Buddha, uh, he asked whether the heavenly sound is really a Really have a really have a now, because the the Sunakara could not hear, but he, he could see. Then Buddha explained due to the lack of his his qualities, he just see the sight. He just, he, he he could not see the sound or heavenly sound. Although the sight and sound are are. Uh, uh, you know, the uh, can be appeal to others, those who have the both qualities of divine eye and divine ears. So <clears throat> after the 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 Buddha explained this power, so the this power, the concentration, the the concentration powers to see and to hear the heavenly sight and heavenly songs. 
Then the Mahali he asked the question, these are these qualities or these achievements of uh, concentration states are the purpose of, of practicing under the Buddha's guidance for monks. And but the Buddha said these are not the purpose. Uh, they are a higher and more perfect reason of achievement to, to practice in the holy life under the Buddha. Then he asked the question, what are these? And so this will be explained in this lesson and in this second part of the Mahali Sutta. And in the title, another one, the soul and body. So this part will be explained by the Buddha after uh, the explanation of the higher and the perfect and more perfect achievement than the, uh, the concentration attainment. So to answer the Mahali's question, what are these, the achievement or the reason uh, to practice and live in, in the holy life or the, the bhikkhu life, monk's life under the uh, Buddha's instruction? So before we continue uh, the Buddha's answer, and uh, let me share some information about the basic Buddhism uh, of Theravada tradition here. So in Theravada tradition, we, we recognize uh, these two individuals all together. So among them, the eight noble person, and therefore the basic one, the putrujana, ordinary persons are four types. Here I will now explain about these four types of ordinary person. And I will focus on the, the eight noble person. So enlightened individuals, because these are uh, these eight noble person are, are connected to this sutta, and also it's good to know, uh, and even to remember is good, you know, to have the gradual uh, achievement, uh, information about the gradual achievement in Buddhist practice. So originally. Uh, the beings are Buddhajana, uh, Buddhajana, ordinary person, until they achieve any attainment of path and fruition in the in meditation practice, in the practice. And so they are recognized as the ordinary person. Being an ordinary person, need to, he needs to develop or he need to practice the meditation or mental practice as concentration and insight. So concentration meditation is regarded as the basis to support the insight knowledge or the attainment of insight knowledge. We need to practice the concentration because in some many studies, the Buddha mentioned the cause that give a rise the inside knowledge is concentration. So uh, the meditator practice concentration in silent level and standing on that support of concentration and he further practice the inside knowledge. Here in this lesson city also uh, the Starting from Samanyakala Sutta, second Sutta is mentioned that the concentration practice first, and after that, the insight knowledge, insight practice. So, when the meditator successfully practice the insight knowledge, vipassana jnana, vipassana meditation, and he attained the supramundane path, supramundane path, the first attainment is called. The sort of the mega, the path of stream entry, realizing the nibbana in first stage. After that, that person is called the the fruition individual of stream entry. 
this moment, the path entries, uh, stream entry is only one mind moment, very short. After what is continued to be a sort of a dipalatana number two, the fruition individual. So all the mega moments, the path moments are very short, only one mind moment. So normally we just can, we can point out only the fruition individual in our daily life usage because the mega moment is very short. So the fruition, four fruition individuals are, are well known to address in daily life language. So Sotapanna refers to the Sotapadifalatana. And Sakaragami, second stage attainment, is regarded as the Sakaragami individual, the fruition uh, of one's entire, one's returner, sorry, one's returner. So it is said the after the attainment of Sotapati fruition, the fruition of state entry, he has only seven lives at most. After that, he will attain the in Nibbana, so attain the hardship and then enter to the final uh, liberation of pre-Nibbana. And for the second one, after the attainment of second path and fruition, so he can return to human life only one time. But it is not necessary to come one time, even one time. But he can return only one time at most. He will not return twice to the human life. That's why he's required as the Sakaragami. After that, uh, he, he may all be reborn in the in Brahma realm, or Deva realm and Brahma realm. Then he will uh, attain the Arhatship and Prinibbana. After that, if he continue practice Sin Vipassana and he attained that thought, path, and fruition, after that he is regarded as Anagami, which is called non returner. So never return to the sensual plane or existence. So human or Dewa realms never return and, and reborn in the Brahma realm and attain the Arhatship and Prinibbana. If he continue practicing, Vipassana Jnana, he attained the Arhatship, but the path and fruition of Arha. Then he is regarded as the Arhanta, Arhata. So uh, he is uh, the final achievement. That's why after the attainment of uh, path and fruition of Arhat, and in that very life, and doesn't matter, human life or Dewa or Brahma realm, he will um, attain the Brinibana final liberation. No more rebirth for him. So in this case, we should know the spiritual achievement in the practice of insight knowledge, or vipassana meditation. So the first attainment sotapanna, second attainment sakadagami, the third attainment anagami, and the fourth attainment and final attainment is arhat, arhatship. Okay, so these are enlightenment level. So normally um, we count only four because, as I mentioned, the four path individuals, the moments are very short. Okay, so in the Sutta, it, this Sutta it will explain uh, by the name of the Sotapanna, like the stream winner, stream winner, <clears throat> and second one, once return. So let's see how the Buddha mentioned. So remember, this, this achievement, um, uh, the higher and more, more profound achievement than the concentration level, uh, such as the divine eye or divine ears. So by the divine eye and divine ears, you, know, you may think this is very good to enjoy to see the heavenly sight and heaven, heavenly sound, to hear this heavenly sound. <clears throat> this is just, you know, enjoyment. Um, and maybe for some instance, it will have the meditator to learn about their uh, life cycle, how they rebirth, how they, they were born. <clears throat> but for many cases, these are not that much beneficial in the 
the Buddhist practice, you know, not emphasize it in the Buddhist practice. So what they emphasize is to attain the path and fruition, Mega and Pala, in order to liberate from the bondage of suffering, which is called right, sam, samsara in Pali. Okay, so <clears throat> for the past, the Buddha mentioned that uh, the monks here, uh, a monk, whoever, you know, a meditator or practitioner, having abandoned three feathers, become the three winner. So this, this expression gives the information. In order to become a three winner or uh, the first stage of enlightened person, enlightened individual, the meditator need to be able to abandon three feather, the feathers in Pali is called Sanyojana. So here by the name of Sanyojana, it is mentioned. So he needs to abandon, if he could abandon successfully, then he become Sri Vena, Sri Vena. So well, what are these uh, feathers, Sanyojana, and I explain here in the uh, chest, Sota Padimaga, remove or uh, completely eradicate three feathers of, sorry, personality view. So here, personality view, Sakaya Deity. So this is a kind of you know, brown view, uh, grasping. So the existence of individual. The existence of individual actually, uh, according to the ultimate perception, there is no existing individual, and the the only process of mentalities and materialities just arising according to their cause and condition. But for the individual mind, he wrongly hold the view there is individual. That kind of view is called the Sakaya That uh, the personality view. Then second one is doubt, which is So doubt on the, the Buddha, Dhamma, and Sangha, and the cause and effect relationship like this. But this kind of doubt is regarded as one of the feather to be abandoned. Then the third one is adherence to rice and ritual, Silabata Paramasa. This also refers to a kind of wrong view. So believing, believing these rites and ritual will uh, cause my liberation. So I will attain by this right and ritual. So that kind of adherence by the power of wrong view, also one of the feta which can bind the individual in the life cycle of suffering. So these are three uh, feathers abandoned by the Sri Vena. So the path Sotapadimaka, the path of Sri Vena, it removed, completely removed the three feathers. Then after that, he is, he is uh, regarded as the Sri Vena, one of the, the first stage of enlightened individual. So what happened after this, this attainment of being in this stage of enlightened person is this not lead over to states of woe. It means he will not reborn in the woe state after this attainment. So the enlightened individual, even for the first stage, he will not reborn in the woeful state. This is good benefits for the ordinary stage, ordinary person in the life. A rebirth is unsatisfactory. Anywhere it can be, because um, that individual already accumulated the wholesome action, wholesome karma, and unwholesome action, unwholesome karma uh, in the past, in the past life, uh, life, life cycle already accumulated on both sides. So well, we cannot say exactly which gamma is already mature and it can 
have the opportunity to get it is resolved to create the rebirth after death. So uh, this is a the great benefit for the Sri winner. He will not reborn. He's already get the guarantee not to be reborn in any woeful state, hell or uh, hungry ghosts or animals or the demon state of Asura. Then second benefit, uh, the assurance is he is already firmly or uh, strongly set on the path to enlightenment. So after this attainment of Mega, his mind is already inclined to the stage of enlightenment. <clears throat> he will keep continuing practicing until he attained the Arhashit. So these are two benefits here, and normally is mentioned in the Sutta teaching. So in this re in this regard, we can understand and the man of this free winner is need to abandon three feathers and they have the guarantee for two aspect uh, escape from the woeful state, woeful rebirth, and and inclined to the enlightenment. Okay, so after that, the second one, if he continue practicing the inside knowledge, he attained this second stage of enlightenment that's called once returner, uh, Sakadagami, once returner. So for that case, there's no new fat dust is abandoned, no? uh, because this is three and three is the same. Then <clears throat> what the second <clears throat> path knowledge made is reducing the, the level of greed, hatred, and delusion. The three rooted of unwholesome action are reduced. So <clears throat> for that case, although he is not eradicating any new fetters and he reduced the grosser form of sensual desire and ill will <clears throat> in the name of the, the fetters. So sensual desire and ill will, it replaced the, the, the great hatred and delusion, the same. So, so delusion, moha, is running behind and greed is sensual desire. And hatred is evil. But it's just attenuated and reduced. It's still a zidin, but compared to the, the stage of Srivana, his greed, hatred, and delusion level are low, and very, very uh, low level. That's why uh, he does not have the strong attachment like this Srivana. So will not come back several times, uh, only one time. He can come back to human life. <clears throat> then he will continue practicing. And so here, uh, returning to the wall once more and will make an end of suffering. Or, you know, he will be born in other realm or existence higher than the human realm. So these are uh, the two uh, stages of enlightenment. Then, <clears throat> For the third one, which is called the non-returner, non-returner state. So he needs to abandon the five lower feathers. The five lower feathers here, the Sutta test just mentioned the five lower feathers. Uh, so uh, we need to understand what are these five. So sensual desire and evil already reduced by the second stage, but still need to remove completely. That's why the third stage removed completely <clears throat> sensual desire, kamaraga, and evil, pyavara. Then these are the other three, personal tiram, view, <clears throat> adherence to rights and ritual, and dark are uh, already abandoned by the first stage of path. So altogether in this stage, five <clears throat> Sayyodana or five lower fetters are completely irrigated. So, by that case, he will reborn if he could not continue to the Arhashit in this life. He will reborn in the Brahma realm, here, the spontaneous rebirth in the highest sphere. 
Yeah, the spontaneous rebirth of Padiga, it means the um his five aggregates in that realm of existence are uh, yes in the um, formless realm, only four aggregates arise spontaneously. So it's different from the human rebirth. If the human being <clears throat> take the conception and the mother is one, it needs a gradual development and the mother is one. You know, it takes time. But for them, the, the suffering during the process of rebirth is already escaped. So just, uh, just a moment. <clears throat> so spontaneous rebirth. He will reborn there as a Brahma after the attainment of no return. So he need, uh, he removed the five feathers, lower five feathers. So here, remember, uh, the Oran Bhagia, Sanyon Chana, the translator as the five lower feathers. So uh, in the, the enumeration of the Bodhisattva, there are 10 feathers altogether, 10 feathers that bind the uh, living beings in the round of rebirth so that he cannot attain the uh, liberation. So as long as uh, we cannot cut off or on the other hand, abandon these 10 feathers, 10 feathers, Sayojana, the we beings are are bound in the life cycle and have to reborn again and again, running around the samsara, running around the uh, cycle of rebirth. So now in this sutta explanation, we can understand the achievement of enlightenment can be understood, on the other hand, the cutting of the, the fed up or the bonds to liberate. So here, the fight, uh, like the strings, is bind. So already cut off, the five, five feathers are already cut off. Then, here the first fighter event, first, uh, first three parts already, you know, the, uh, call the lower feathers, uh, the, yeah, the personality view. So, So here, after the attainment, which is called the, he completely removed the anagami mega by the non returner, the parts of the non returner, only two feta, sensual desire, kamaraga, and evil javara, because these trees are already abandoned by the, the, by the first path, path, path of the sotapati mega. Then, here, the consciousness, if you are studying Abhidhamma, you will understand. So, there's a consciousness rooted in hatred. So, hatred rooted consciousness are also cutting off, no more arising. And okay, it doesn't matter if you are not studying Abhidhamma, you don't need to, to pay attention on this explanation. And just <clears throat> remember uh, these are five, five lower feather cut by the, the past knowledge of non returner the thought uh, enlightenment attainment, attainment of enlightenment. Then after that, the final stage, the attainment of arhatship. So in order to attain the final stage of enlightenment, arhatship, he need to uh, abandon and uh, remove the, all the remaining fetter, or all, all the remaining defilements. So here, the expression, oh, sorry, the expression comes through the extinction of the corruption. <clears throat> corruption. So, um, okay, the, this one normally expressed in the Pali is called the Asawa. So asawa kaya. There are several expressions come to express the defilements. Um, 
um, mental defilements or mental corruption is it called this one is asawa or the mental defilement kilesa and just now i mentioned that sanyojana these all are uh, reference to the unwholesome state unwholesome state or evil state of the mind so if one can remove these uh, ultimate realities of defilements or corruption or the same, the, the mental uh, corruption, um, mental defilement or the, the fetters, uh, he, he is considered as the enlightened person. So the, enlight the knowledge which regards as the enlightenment stages has the, the function to take the nirvana as it is object and also cut off either the, whether it's name in the name of the men, the fetters or, or defilements or corruption. These unwholesome fetters are uh, eradicated by the path knowledge. So after the attainment of final relation, final attain, final enlightenment stage, <clears throat> he already he. Deliverance from his mind is already deliverance from the corruption. So, what he lived with the uh, deliverance mind and deliverance wisdom in this very life. But after this life, he will not be reborn anyway. So, at the end of this life, it's considered as the final pre nibbana. So, um. This is the, the final stage of enlightenment. Then, in order to attain the final stage, to match with the former statement that mentioned about the, the five lower fetters, the remaining fetters, we, we should know. So these are the information about the five. We, we can see the higher fetter. So, higher fetter, um, the desire. For five material existence and desire for immaterial existence. So here, desire uh, or desires are classified into three types. Three types. The first type is desire, sensual desire. So sensual desire is abandoned by the third stage. The second stage just uh, low down the level of uh, the sensual desire. In the form of greed, it is mentioned that greed. So the third stage already removed the desire for the sensual existence or the life in the sensual, sensual plane of existence. And the remaining two of two, two forms of desire to the five material existence and immaterial existence are removed by the, the knowledge of arhatship. So attainment of arahaship. Then the third one is concept, mana. So this is also one of the unwholesome fetters. Then the fourth is recklessness, which is called udhaja in Pali. So recklessness now, the opposite of the, uh, the, the concentrated uh, mind. Uh, then the last one, ignorance. Or, and the last one, ignorance, a witcha. Or on the other hand, it is uh, it is said the moha, delusion. So a witcha refers to the ultimate realities of mental fetters or, or delusion, moha. Okay, so uh, with the attainment of arhata knowledge, the path knowledge of arhata mega, the individual, the person abandon all remaining feather or higher feather, which is called Uttambhagya Sayyajana. So this uh, regards as the feathers because as long as they are not removed, they can bind the beings in the Brahma realms or of Brahma realms of five material sphere or immaterial sphere. After that, you know, he cannot uh, attain the liberation, complete liberation. Although he will not be reborn in the sensual realm, and he can reborn in the in the Brahma realm. So 
At the cutting of the Sayochana, the feathers, he is fully liberated individual, and thus so is regarded as the higher, uh, highest one, highest uh, the perfect achievement in the practice of holy life under the Buddha. So the Buddha mentioned you know, four stages of enlightenment as the main purpose of practicing in, in the in the Buddhist, Buddhist Buddhism as the as a monk. So after listening, you know, the, these four achievements, four stages of enlightenment, uh, as the purpose of practicing man's life. The, the Prince Mahali or Otada, he asked the question whether there is a path or the method to practice to attain the, the stages of enlightenment. So he asked the practice, he asked the method, a path to attain these super uh su super mundane level of achievement. On the other hand, it's called the Magai Pala. It's very, very famous. And Supramane level. Or to become a noble person. Then the Buddha mentioned, yeah, of course, there's a path and a method to practice. So Buddha here just mentioned in brief way. So it does not extend a lot. It just mentioned the noble eightfold path. So from the beginning of the past Sutta, Tamachaka Bodhana Sutta, Buddha mentioned. Is no way a full path to attain the enlightenment or to attain the liberation. So these are the Nova A4 path, it constitutes of Nova A4 path, are eight feathers, the first one, and second one, you no know, right view and right thought, considered as the, the wisdom training or training of wisdom aspect. And that three to five, right speech, right action, right livelihood. Uh, considered as, as the training of morality. So, wisdom aspect, morality aspect, after the concentration aspect. So, right of thought, right mindfulness, and right concentration. These are no way it for us. Or, on the other hand, we can express the threefold training. So, here in the middle, the morality, concentration, and wisdom. But these, when they uh, come to maturity, so come to mature enough and the person attain the enlightenment. So these eight qualities are considered as the path to attain the supreme path and knowledge or supramanian path and knowledge. So the Buddha mentioned, but this is the path. If you practice to develop these eight feathers or noble eightfold path, you will attain these stages of enlightenment. So then Buddha further mentioned about the story when he was asked uh, the philosophical question by two, two wanderers, two wanderers of the Mandisa and Jaliya to these are two names of the, the disciple of the wooden boat accepted. This is the famous one during that time. So these two wanderers came to the Buddha and they asked the philosophical question about that. The, whether the soul and body. So because in the, that time, in their view, there's a certain soul and body. So they have the question. And also at that time, widely, he discusses about this, whether the soul and body are the same or different, different feathers. They come to the Buddha and ask, and the Buddha sharing this, uh, this story to the Mahali. Then also the Buddha, you know, just went to share about his response, his answer about them, actually not really giving an answer how he responds to this kind of philosophical question. So sometimes uh, it is hard to discuss if something is not in our range. That's why we should know in discussion what is 
in the relevant context of our discussion. Here, when they they block two wanderers, two two wanderers block this kind of philosophical question to the Buddha and how the Buddha responds. Let's see. It. Then the Buddha reminds them to pay attention properly. And, and here, starting from the appearance of the Buddha in the in the wall. After the fully enlightenment under the body tree, we can see that that is the bodies, the Buddha appear in the wall. And such kind of Buddha, such kind of great teacher coming to appear in this wall. And what he did is, as mentioned in the, the previous sutta, so here he preached the Dhamma. Such kind of Dhamma, the, the, the lovely in the beginning, medium, and the end, and which can uh, displace the perfect, fully perfect holy life and fully practiced, fully uh, purified holy life. Then after hearing this kind of Dhamma, this kind of Dhamma, and he has a sadha, he has a faith on the Buddha and Dhamma, and he joined in the Sangha order and ordained it. So this just mentioned of the process, it's not necessary to ordain also, you know, the, the lay people also can practice. So what he did is the moral tea practice. So as mentioned in the former Sutta, is continue uh, the no moral tea practice after that. And also to the, the absence of the mental hindrances. So delivering from the mental hindrances through the practice of the concentration and okay finally attain the jhana so uh first jhana second jhana etc so this already mentioned in the second sutta or diga nikaya the samanya phala sutta the gradual practice so if the person following the buddha's guidance and the teaching of the buddha and he attained the certain level of concentration, which is called first jhana. Okay, so in relation to this attainment of first jhana, and the Buddha said, so is there anything to talk about the that philosoph philosophical question you ask, whether the soul and body are the same or different? So Buddha asked them, so one person by following the Buddha's teaching and attain the jhana, in this case, is there any connection with your question, your philosophical question? The same or the different doesn't matter. He practiced and he attained the certain level of concentration, the jhana, first jhana. In this case, they replied, yeah, there's no, there's uh, nothing to say, nothing to say about this philosophical question in the attainment of jhana. So that's the reason the Buddha say, yeah, I know and see about this. There's no connection about this kind of question and this kind of practice and achievement. So the Buddha, the purpose to appear in this world is to teach the living beings for the spiritual practice for the attainment of enlightenment, especially it refers to the enlightenment, so that the beings can liberate from this bondage of samsara. So here, even to the first jhana, or second jhana, third jhana, full jhana attainment, is no relationship with this kind of question, this kind of discussion, or development of this kind of idea, whether the soul and body same or different. So no relationship. That's why the Buddha say, by knowing that, by seeing that, there's no relation about that. There's no point to talk about whether the same or different in the practice or concentration practice for the um, achievement of concentration practice. And I don't say anything. I don't, I don't say, you know, any discussion or any answer about the soul and body are the same or different. 
then Buddha keep continuing as mentioned in the uh, second sutta. So after that, the the practice continued to the knowledge and vision, the attainment of knowledge and vision. So it reached to the uh, the final attainment. You know, the final attainment one uh, one achieve the final liberation. So for the hardship, as well, is there any connection? The Buddha asked. You know, the Buddha mentioned that he practiced vipassana and he he attained the his stages of enlightenment and finally reached to the highest achievement of hardship. So for this case also, is there any connection? The Buddha asked, and yeah, they say there's no connection. There's nothing to say. Then the Buddha conclude, yeah, this is the reason. Um, I'm not talking about the uh, you know the development of this kind of uh, discussion on the philosophical question. Uh, so many wanderers are doing this, but and uh, different from these wanderer, the Buddha, what the Buddha made is teaching, teaching for this spiritual development. And the purpose is to attain the enlightenment and finally liberate from samsara and attain the nibbana. So well, in this case, that's why I don't I don't say the answer. I just say the response to the philosophical question. So the Buddha, how the Buddha react or respond to this kind of question when he has uh, asked. Uh, is the Buddha just mentioned the practice and achievement, the connection. And the Buddha uh, disclosed them, uh, let them know there's no connection about this. There's really, uh, so there's no reason to talk about this kind of philosophical question. Then finally, the, uh, the Otada, or on the other name is Mahali, Mahali Lichui, he rejoices the Buddha as well. And this is the end. So two parts, the past part, talking about the heavenly sight and sound in relation to the story of Sunakata. Based, based on that, that uh, story, the question comes, uh, the concentration achievement is the reason to practice under the Buddha uh, in holy life. Then the Buddha answered, no, this is not the reason. The higher reason is achievement of the path and fruition or super, super mundane achievement or enlightenment. Then, and regarding that, the Mahali continue the path. And the Buddha just mentioned the Noble Eightfold Path. So if you practice Noble Eightfold Path, you will attain this enlightenment Step, uh, step by step. Finally, you liberate from this suffering. Then Buddha mentioned, sometimes you know, people are confused in that. Or if we just practice this and not know what the other is past, you know, there are many, many things to learn uh, in this world. So is it possible? Uh, we, should, we should try to learn others to complete our knowledge like this. So here yeah, in this age, even to use the mobile phone or computer, you know, sometimes we, we cannot learn many things because the technology is developing in every day. So it is hard to say I have the complete knowledge in relation to the uh, ordinary things. So we need to emphasize. So the Buddha also mentioned, you know, this is the, the practice and achievement. It's complete, a complete set is already mentioned systematically. So for such kind of philosophical contest, no reason to involve. So in this sutta, uh, we learn this kind of teaching and we should practice this understanding or taking the Buddha as example, how he responds to such kind of question, such kind of discussion. And some sometimes we should avoid the such 
some kind of some some of the discussion in daily life. Okay, thank you very much for your uh, attention and participation. And let's uh, let me stop here my explanation. Thank you very much. Thank you.